rec shear device. And this device actually works in a combination of an electric driven motor and air pressure. The uh, electric motor actually provides the shear, whereas the air pressure provides the normal uh, stress. The shear force is measured by this load cell right here, which um, this is our zero value, so we'll have to uh, take that into account to subtract the 372, because when there's no force applied, it's reading 372 uh, pounds. And as we apply force, you'll see that number responding. So we'll have to subtract the zero force of 372 in this case. The vertical uh, load cell would be measuring the load that is applied on the specimen in a vertical direction. Our test specimen is placed in here. It's a square box, a dry condition, or it can be conducted in a saturated condition underwater. So the cell has been removed from the equipment, and uh, in the process of doing that, there's a lot of um, um, need for, for care in doing that. For one, is the, this, test is, this test cell is pretty heavy. Um, number two is that the, the space is very tight in here and it's devised in such a way that it's not the most um, comfortable uh, procedure to lift it and take it out so uh, you have to be careful in terms of uh, getting your fingers out of the way to avoid any possibilities of injuries in doing that. This is brass and it's heavy. are acceptable. These holders in here, they only have the, the purpose of assembling it together, but during the test we remove them so that the split box can actually uh, shear. And this is what is going on when you shear the sample. The bottom stays fixed and you're shearing the top. So I'm going to take this apart and you can see that the soil is actually being sheared and the way that we assemble this is with a porous stone so if you have water uh, to make sure that the porous stone can dissipate the pressure and likewise the pressure is dissipated through these grooves the bottom of the sample has a similar um, piece which is a good idea to dismantle it totally and reassemble it. But it's again porous stone and the uh, groove plate. So assembling the, the test device, we put the bottom porous stone. And it fits very, very tightly. Um, this is going to be the dimension of the soil that we're going to be testing. And that is so we're going to turn it to align these holes. And this is where the guiding screws come in. For demonstration purposes, we're just doing dry sand. And this is a fine to medium sand, typical material that you can buy in any uh, hardware store but it could be clay, cohesive soils also in different conditions of saturation. And like I mentioned before, they can be tested in dry or saturated conditions. This is a porous stone that um, goes with the top. And what we need to ensure in this case is just giving a little bit of a flat surface to sit on and obviously um, we have to make sure that there is enough soil that we're uh, going above the split box so by looking at the material we're going to have the uh, determine if the, um, the sample is sufficient or you need more sample so we, we can also uh, determine the uh, 
void ratio, porosity, density of the material tested. So this sand, in our case, was previously weighed. And finally we can place the porous stone. Now our loading cap is going to be placed on top of it. And this sphere ensures that the weight is distributed evenly through the sample. So with the guiding screws tightened by hand, finger tight, now we're in the situation that we need to grab the material, the test assembly, and place it in this uh, box. There's not a lot of room to work with, so we have to be careful and avoid damaging the equipment and ourselves. Inspect it carefully to be sure that everything is lined properly. So we're uh, almost ready to test, but there's a couple of things that have to happen uh, in order to be able to apply shear. Uh, one of them is we need to re-engage the shear device through the load cell, and that is this uh, spacer in here, or this pin, that has actually to go through and lock in there. Very important at this point is uh, to remember removing the guiding screws that we put here. If you were to forget that, a couple of things could go wrong, like the load cell would be damaged, because all the force now um, could be transmitted on it and also um, damage the equipment. So this, we're done with those two, uh, you can track the vertical deformation with a dial gauge that is attached here. The uh, deformation that we measure is the horizontal displacement, and that's measured manually uh, through this dial gauge. But we also maintain a constant horizontal displacement, and that is adjustable. Too. So we have the pressure supply applied, and it's into the system. So as I close the vent in here and I open the load, let's say that we maintain a constant um, vertical or normal force around 500 pounds. So that's one of the parameters that we will set. So this is a fine um, tuning on the number of pounds. Okay. So the other adjustment that we need to select is the horizontal rate of shear or displacement, horizontal displacement. And that is done through this knob. Uh, and other than that, we're ready to go. Uh, we make sure that the box is fully lined up in here and you don't see a gap uh, in the box. If needed, uh, you can dislodge this and adjust it accordingly. But once you clip that in, then the equipment will run by the electric drive. At this point, we also want to be sure that our zero reading is lined up and you can adjust it in that ring. And if needed, you could release this and uh, adjust also the, the run of the dial gauge. So we're ready to go with 500 pounds. Oh. 
down we go. And as we bring that number Let's select uh, close to 0.5. We're starting to see the shear stress going up as measured by the load cell. And we're going to be recording displacement and force at set interval. This force, the shear force, will climb up to a maximum stress while the vertical force is maintained constant at 500 pounds. As the test progresses, you can see the gap uh, between the upper and lower parts of the box. And you still see the shear force climbing up it's about 686, but that number will have to be uh, adjusted for the zero condition, so we're going to remove the initial force. To close it, you will have to go full closure, clockwise, but now we have trapped pressure in there. So if you want to uh, vent that pressure, you have to open the vent, and at the same time request the use of that supply by applying a load. You'll hear the sound and we have with both vent and load we have vented the pressure in the system. So it's probably safer to leave everything open at this point except for the supply that, um, so this two open so there's no pressure in the system and I can proceed um, to ensure that there's no pressure applied on it so I can actually take the sample apart.